Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Maria Albina Michael and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks to Russian President Vladimir Putin, calls for immediate end to violence, raises safety issue of Indians in Ukraine. India considering ways to evacuate its citizens as Ukraine closes its airspace for civilian flights. United Nations Security Council to vote today on a draft resolution demanding Moscow to immediately and unconditionally withdraw its troops from Ukraine. North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO Alliance to hold a virtual emergency summit today to discuss Ukrainian crisis. Asian markets bounce back spurred by a U.S. rebound after a wave of international sanctions against Russia. Earthquake of 6.2 magnitude rocks Indonesia. At least two killed as scores of buildings crumble. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses webinar Atman Nirbhartha in defense. Call to action today says the government is continuously working to create an indigenous ecosystem for development of defense equipments in the country. Post-union budget webinar of health ministry to be inaugurated by Prime Minister tomorrow. President Ramnath Kovind arrives in Guwahati on a three-day visit to Assam to inaugurate the year-long celebration to mark the 400th birth anniversary of the great home general Lachit Bodfukan this evening. Campaigning comes to close today for the fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Two terrorists killed in an encounter with security forces in Amshipura area of Shupia district in Kashmir. And in cricket, India beat Sri Lanka by 62 runs in first T20 of three-match series at Lucknow. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and get fully vaccinated and also help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain do gas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-239-78046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a telephonic conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin last night. President Putin briefed Prime Minister Modi about the recent developments regarding Ukraine. In a release, Prime Minister's office said the Prime Minister reiterated his long-standing conviction that the differences between Russia and the NATO group can only be resolved through honest and sincere dialogue. The Prime Minister appealed for an immediate cessation of violence and called for concerted efforts from all sides to return to the path of diplomatic negotiations and dialogue. Prime Minister Modi also sensitized the Russian president about India's concerns regarding the safety of the Indian citizens in Ukraine, especially students, and conveyed that India attaches the highest priority to their safe exit and return to India. The leaders agreed that their officials and diplomatic teams would continue to maintain regular contacts on issues of topical interest. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said 137 people, including 10 military officers, have been killed and 316 people were injured so far. In a national address this morning, the Ukrainian president said Russia's strikes targeted both military and civilian sites. In both Ukrainian and Russian language, he made appeals to Moscow for a ceasefire. Ukraine's military has published footage of what it says is a street gun battle between Ukrainian defenders in the northeastern city of Sumy and Russian attackers. Multiple explosions were heard in and around Ukraine's capital in the early hours today, according to media reports. Thousands of people spent their night deep underground, jamming Kiev's subway station. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden said Washington will intervene if Putin moves into NATO countries. The countries on NATO's eastern flank, especially the Baltic states of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, all have received the first batches of U.S. military troops and equipment. Asian markets edged higher after opening today, 
spurred by a U.S. rebound after a wave of international sankctions against Russia. Tokyo's Nikkei 225 index opened 0.9% higher this morning, while other indices were also in the green. South Korea's Kospi jumped 1.6% and the S&P ASX 200 in Sydney was up 0.3% today. Global shares briefly plunged yesterday after Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine. Oil prices have also eased slightly after surging past $100 a barrel. Russia is the second largest exporter of crude oil and the world's biggest exporter of natural gas worldwide, fueling concerns that international sanctions might restrict supplies and drive up prices. India is considering different ways to evacuate its citizens from Ukraine as commercial flights can no longer land in the war-torn country. In view of the closure of the Ukrainian airspace, alternative arrangements have been made for the evacuation of Indian nationals. A team from the Indian Embassy in Hungary has been dispatched to the border post of Zohani to coordinate and provide assistance to facilitate exit of Indians from Ukraine. In a tweet, the mission said it is working with the Hungary government to provide all possible assistance. India is closely monitoring the situation and evacuation plans have been worked out. External affairs ministry teams have also been sent to the land borders with Ukraine in Poland, Slovak Republic and Romania. The team from Poland is on its way to Krakowicz land border with Ukraine. The team from Slovak Republic is on its way to Wisny Nemikei land border and the team from Romania is on its way to Suchava. The Ministry has advised Indian nationals in Ukraine near these border points to contact these teams in case they wish to depart from Ukraine. The contact numbers are available on the website of the Ministry. Around 20,000 Indians are stuck in Ukraine after Russia launched a military operation against its neighbor. Odisha Chief Minister Navin Patnaik today spoke to Home Minister Amit Shah over telephone and requested safe evacuation of stranded Uriya students and laborers from Ukraine. Home Minister assured the Chief Minister that the government is in touch with the Ukraine government and working to bring back students and labourers at the earliest. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has said that the state government will take efforts to bring 5,000 students and workers living in Ukraine back to the state. More from our correspondent. The state government has been receiving a steady number of emergency calls from the students studying in Ukraine and also from their parents living in various parts of the state. Students have been using WhatsApp video calls explaining their plight. At least 916 students have contacted the emergency help desk set up exclusively since yesterday. Chief Minister Stalin has stated that all the students who had contacted the government will be brought back at the expense of the state government. Another emergency help desk has been set up at Tamil Nadu House in New Delhi for the purpose. Jacinta Lazarus, Commissioner of the Rehabilitation and welfare of non-resident Tamils will coordinate the logistics and the needed assistance. People from Tamil Nadu living in Ukraine can contact the help desk through ukrainetamils at gmail.com and nrtchennai at gmail.com. Joy, AIR News, Chennai. The United Nations Security Council will vote today on a draft resolution demanding Moscow to immediately and unconditionally withdraw its troops from Ukraine. The U.S. drafted resolution is then expected to be taken up by the 193-member U.N. General Assembly within days. A desk report. As the resolution is going for vote, Biden administration feels the measure might be blocked in the 15-member Security Council. A senior U.S. official said Washington and allies see voting as a chance to show Russia is isolated over its actions. Diplomats opined that at least 11 members would vote in favor while it was unclear how China and rest would vote. The council is scheduled to vote 1.30 a.m. Indian time. Russia is one of the council veto powers along with other permanent members of the UN Security Council, China, France, the United Kingdom and the United States. In a related development, European Union has announced extensive new sanctions on Russia. Speaking after a meeting that ended in the early hours in Brussels today, EU President Ursula von der Leyen said the sanctions will target areas including the financial sector, energy, transport and visas for the Russian elite. The sanctions, however, do not cover the import of Russian gas into the EU. Questioned on this, von der Leyen said they were urgently looking at how to wean Europe off its dependence on Russian energy. French President Emmanuel
Ivan Makhon said $336 million of aid would be offered to Ukraine as well as military equipment. Meanwhile, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, said the 30-nation alliance will be holding a virtual emergency summit today to discuss the way forward. The meeting would be joined by the leaders of Sweden, Finland and European Union institutions. Swati Rokheja, News Desk. The United Nations is allocating $20 million to scale up its humanitarian operations in Ukraine following Russia's special military strike in the country. Making the announcement yesterday, Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the UN and its humanitarian partners are committed to staying and delivering to support people in Ukraine in the time of need, regardless of who are, who or where they are. UN humanitarian chief Martin Griffith said, the $20 million from the UN Central Emergency Response Fund will help with health care, shelter, food and water and sanitation to the most vulnerable people affected by the conflict. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the government is continuously working to create an indigenous ecosystem for development of defence equipments in the country by emphasising on self-reliance and make in India. Prime Minister today delivered the inaugural address at post-budget webinar on Atmanir Bharata and the defence call to action. इस साल के बजट में देश के भीतर ही रिसर्च डिजाइन और डेवलपमेंट से लेकर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग तक का एक वाइब्रेंट इकोसिस्टम विकसित करने का ब्लूप्रिंट है रक्षा बजट में लगभग 70 परसेंट सिर्फ डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्री के लिए रखा गया है डिफेंस मिनिस्ट्री अब तक 200 से भी ज्यादा डिफेंस प्लेटफॉर्म्स और इक्विपमेंट की पॉजिटिव इंडिजनाइजेशन लिस्ट जारी कर चुकी है ही सेड मोर देन 350 न्यू इंडस्ट्रियल लाइसेंसेस हैव बीन इशूड फॉर डिफेंस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इन द लास्ट सेवन इयर्स विच शोज कमिटमेंट टुवर्ड्स मेक इन इंडिया ही एडेड दैट ओनली 200 लाइसेंसेस वर इशूड विद इन द स्पैन ऑफ फोर्टीन ईयर्स फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड वन टू टू थाउजेंड एंड फोर्टीन ही सेड सेवन न्यू डिफेंस अंडरटेकिंग्स हैव बीन क्रिएटेड इन द लास्ट ईयर which are expanding business rapidly and reaching new markets highlighting the steps taken to make the country self reliant in defense sector prime minister said contracts of around 54000 crore rupees been signed for domestic procurement he added that the procurement process related to equipment worth more than 4.5 lakh crore rupees is in different stages stressing on developing the customized weapons mr modi said if all of the country have the same kind of weapons the uniqueness of the defense forces will hamper he said uniqueness and surprise element can be ensured when the weapons are been developed in the country itself he said when the country brings weapons from outside its process is so long that by the time they reach security forces many of them have become outdated he said its solution lies in self lines and make in india prime minister narendra modi will inaugurate the post union budget webinar of health ministry tomorrow The objective of the webinar is to involve stakeholders in taking forward the various initiatives of the government in the health sector. Prime Minister's address will set the tone for the post-budget webinars. The webinar will have panel discussions with eminent speakers and experts from Health Ministry, Niti Aayog, Industry Fora, Startups and Academia, along with interactive sessions with stakeholders. Over 176 crore 86 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Health Ministry said over 32 lakh 4000 doses were administered yesterday. The recovery rate is currently at 98.49%. Nearly 27000 recoveries in the last 24 hours increases total recoveries to 4 crore 22 lakh 46884. Over 13,000 new cases were recorded in the last 24 hours. Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla today said there is a need to follow a risk assessment based approach on the opening of economic activities in the country as there is substantial decline in number of COVID-19 cases. In a letter addressed to all chief secretaries of the states, Mr. Bhalla however emphasized that while allowing such activities, the COVID appropriate behavior should be followed. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks to Russian President Vladimir Putin calls for immediate end to violence raises safety issue of Indians in Ukraine. India considering ways to evacuate its citizens as Ukraine closes its airspace for civilian flights. United Nations Security Council to vote today on a draft resolution demanding Moscow to immediately and unconditionally withdraw its troops from Ukraine. 
North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO Alliance to hold virtual emergency summit today to discuss the Ukrainian crisis. Asian markets bounce back spurred by U.S. rebound after a wave of international sanctions against Russia. Earthquake of 6.2 magnitude rocks Indonesia at least two killed as scores of buildings crumble. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses webinar Atma Nirbharta in defense call to action today says government is continuously working to create an indigenous ecosystem for development of defense equipments in the country. Post-Union Budget Webinar of Health Ministry to be inaugurated by Prime Minister tomorrow. President Ramnath Kovind arrives in Guwahati on a three-day visit to Assam to inaugurate the year-long celebration to mark the 400th birth anniversary of the great Ohom General Lachit Borfukan this evening. Campaigning comes to a close today for the fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Two terrorists killed in an encounter with security forces in Amshipura area of Shopian district in Kashmir and in cricket India beat Sri Lanka by 62 runs in the first T20 of the three-match series at Lucknow. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. <laughs> President Ramnath Kovind has arrived in Guwahati on a three-day visit to Assam. Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi and Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma received him at the airport. Mr. Kovind will inaugurate the year-long celebration to mark the 400th birth anniversary of the great Ahom General Lachit Bodfukan in Guwahati this evening. He will also lay the foundation for a memorial of the Alaboy Battle at Dodora in Kamrup District. Tomorrow, Mr. Kovind will attend the convocation ceremony of Tezpur University. On the same day, the President will undertake a jeep safari in Kaziranga National Park and also review the conservation and development efforts of the park. In pole-bound Uttar Pradesh, the high-pitched electoral campaign for the fifth of seven-phase assembly elections is going to conclude today in the evening. The poll campaign for the subsequent phases in UP and two-phase polling in Manipur is going on in full swing. The fifth phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh will be conducted on Sunday in 61 assembly constituencies from 12 districts. The electoral battle scenario in the fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh indicates that there are total 692 candidates in the fray for 61 assembly seats. During the first phase of assembly elections in Manipur, 38 seats from six districts will go to polls on Monday, out of which one seat is reserved for the scheduled castes and eight seats are reserved for the scheduled tribes. There are 173 candidates, including 15 women, are contesting for 38 seats in the first phase. The sixth phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh will be concluded on 3rd of March in 57 assembly constituencies. In Manipur, with just one day left for campaigning for the first phase of assembly polls, political parties and candidates are making last-ditch efforts to woo the voters. Besides political parties, road shows and meetings, social media is also playing a crucial role in the campaigning for the ensuing polls. More from an Imphal correspondent. With COVID protocol in place and to ensure COVID-free campaign, political parties and candidates are taking the benefit of social media to reach out to voters. Besides door-to-door campaign and personal contacts, social media forums such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp are extensively used by political parties and candidates for campaigning. Political parties such as BJP and Congress are flooding the social media platform with campaign theme songs. Campaigning for the first phase of polls ends tomorrow. Jin Gangke, AIR News, Infal. But the session of the Bihar legislature began today with the address of Governor Fagu Chuhan. Addressing the joint session, Governor Fagu Chuhan said, Bihar government has done a commendable job during the COVID period. Mr. Chuhan said Rs. 4 lakh ex gratia was paid to the next of the kin of those who died due to COVID pandemic. In Kashmir Valley, two terrorists have been killed in an encounter with security forces in Amshipura area of Shupia district. A police spokesman said that the identity of the slain terrorists is yet to be ascertained. 
incriminating material including arms and ammunition was recovered from the encounter site and now let's listen to our special program azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle azadi ka amrit mahotsav azadi ka safar with air news birth of a nation india's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed air news brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day on the 25th of february pitts india act of 1784 was passed by the british parliament in order to rectify the shortcomings of the regulating act of 1773 the act was named after william pitt who was then prime minister of britain the act was also known as the east india company act 1784 the purpose of this act was to draw a clear distinction between the commercial and political activities of the East India Company the act introduced a system of dual control under which for political matters the board of control was created and for commercial affairs the court of directors was appointed the pitts act thus helped in establishing the british crown's authority over the civil military and revenue matters in the indian territories the east india company however held monopoly over the commercial activities in the indian territories and also had the right to appoint or dismiss its own officials it was after the coming of the pitts india act that the property of the east india company was called british possessions in india also the direct control over the administration of india was given to the british government these changes in administration brought about by the pitts india act continued till 1858 when the british government was forced to change the way of administration after the first war of independence in 1857 We also remember the Indian independence activist Ravi Shankar Maharaj who was born on the 25th of February 1884 in Kheda district of Gujarat. Ravi Shankar was influenced by Arya Samaj philosophy. He was one of the earliest and closest associates of Gandhi ji and Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel. Along with Darbar Gopal Das Desai, Narhari Parikh and Mohanlal Pandya Ravi Shankar was the chief organizer of nationalist revolts in Gujarat in the 1920s and 1930s He founded Rashtriya Shala National School in Sunav village in 1920 He left his rights on ancestral property and joined the Indian independence movement in 1921 He participated in Satyagraha in 1923 and protested against Haidia tax. He also participated in Bardoli Satyagraha in 1926 and was imprisoned by the British for 6 months. He participated in relief work for flood victims in 1927 which earned him recognition. He joined Gandhi ji in Salt March in 1930 and was imprisoned for 2 years. In 1942 he participated in the Quit India movement and also tried to pacify communal violence in Ahmedabad After the independence of India he devoted himself to social work he joined Vinoba Bhave in the Bhudan movement and traveled 6000 kilometers between 1955 and 1958 in the 1960s he organized and supported the sarvodaya movement ravi shankar maharaj inaugurated the state of gujarat when it was created on the 1st of may 1960 until his death it was a tradition that every newly appointed chief minister of gujarat visited him for blessings after taking oath of office he died on the 1st of july 1984 in bursad 
Gujarat. The memorial dedicated to him is located at Adhyapan Mandir, Bochas. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. The Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI, has arrested NSE's former group operating officer, Anand Subramanian, in the alleged irregularities in the stock market manipulation case. He was arrested from his Chennai home late night and is being brought to the agency's headquarters in Delhi. He was an advisor to the NSE's ND Chitra Ramakrishna. Lookout circulars were issued against Anand Subramanian, Chitra Ramakrishna and Ravi Narayan as part of the investigation. In Indonesia, at least two people died after a 6.2 magnitude earthquake rocked Sumatra Island today. Media reports said residents were seen shuttling loved ones to safety as buildings crumbled around them. The quake came just minutes after less violent tremor as terrified residents had begun evacuating the houses. According to the United States Geological Survey, the quake hit the islands north at a depth of 12 kilometers, about 70 kilometers from the town of Bukitinggi in West Sumatra province. In a setback to an already derailed Pakistan's economy, the United States has imposed a fine of $55 million on the National Bank of Pakistan, NBP, and its New York branch for anti-money laundering violations and for remitted, repeated compliance failures. The fines have been imposed by the U.S. Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States and the Superintendent of Financial Services of the State of New York impose fines on the Central Bank of Pakistan over deficiencies and non-compliance with the federal laws. In cricket, India defeated Sri Lanka by 62 runs in the first T20 international of the three-match series at Lucknow last night. After setting a target of 200 runs, India restricted Sri Lanka to 137 for 6 in 20 overs. For India, Bhubaneswar Kumar and Venkatesh Ayat bagged two wickets each while Yuzvendra Chehal and Ravindra Jadeja claimed one wicket each. Earlier, the host posted 199 for two and 20 overs after being invited to bat first. The Sensex and the Nifty today bounced back and recovered 2.5% in afternoon trade after falling more than 4.5% in previous session. Both stocks gained in sync with gains in the global share markets. The BSE Sensex was trading above 55,800 points, while the NSC Nifty was trading above 16,600. The Sensex climbed 1,318 points, or 2.42 percent, to trade at 55,848. The Nifty also surged 404 points, or 2.49 percent, to 16,652 when reports last came in. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi is likely to have a thunderstorm with rain. The temperature will vary between 13 and 26 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 21 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 33 degrees. Chennai, partly cloudy sky later. The temperature will vary between 21 and 33 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was 20 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 30 degrees. Srinagar will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Temperature will hover between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature was 9 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 22 degrees. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaks to Russian President Vladimir Putin, calls for immediate end to violence, raises safety issue of Indians in Ukraine. India considering ways to evacuate its citizens as Ukraine closes its airspace for civilian flights. United Nations Security Council to vote today on a draft resolution demanding Moscow to immediately and unconditionally withdraw its troops from Ukraine. North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO Alliance to hold a virtual emergency summit today to discuss Ukrainian crisis. Asian markets bounce back spurred by a U.S. rebound after a wave of international sanctions against Russia. Earthquake of 6.2 magnitude rocks Indonesia. At least two killed as scores of buildings crumble. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses webinar Atmanirbhartha in defense call to action today. Says government is continuously working to create an indigenous ecosystem for development of defense equipments in the country. Post-union budget webinar of health ministry to be inaugurated by Prime Minister tomorrow. 
President Ramnath Kovind arrives in Guwahati on a three-day visit to Assam to inaugurate the year-long celebration to mark the 400th birth anniversary of the great Ahom General Lachit Borfukan this evening. Campaigning comes to close today for the fifth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. And in cricket, India beat Sri Lanka by 62 runs in first C20 of three-match series at Lucknow. And with that, we end the midday news.